Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video. In this video, we are having a chat with Bob Chorley, Head of Training at Filmlight. Bob, thank you so much for coming along. How are you? I'm great, thanks. So you're joining us from London, correct? Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what you do at Filmlight? I, as well as training, um, I also help out with support and I do a fair bit of technical writing. So if you look at any of our manuals, there's a fairly high chance that I will have written some of those. Cool. So, uh, Bob, I have a few questions for you today, mostly around Baselight Look, because I think that Baselight Look was um, a nice surprise uh, for me, certainly. I know that we had talked about refreshers in that space, but um, to see the new name and the new software and um, all of that was really cool. My first question really is, uh, why Baselight Look? What's new? Yeah, okay. So, we uh, originally, we, we released Baselight Student, uh, which was aimed directly, as the, as the name implies, uh, directly at people learning Baselight. Um, we appreciate that the, the type of system that Baselight is means that it's, it's actually quite difficult to get your hands on the system or even get your hands on the software. And we know, obviously, we understand a lot of people would love to learn about Baselight. There are colorists who, who are using other systems. We released Baselight students uh, to give people an opportunity to actually get hands on. So it was a free software. Um, and it had a 90 day license. Uh, you basically had to sign up to get the license. And then after 90 days, you had to reapply for the license. Um, so there was, it was a bit of a palaver to, to renew it. Um, with Baselight Look, we've actually taken it a step further. Um, but the, the name itself reflects the fact that we realize that it's not just people who want to learn Baselight who want to use the software. Um, apart from colorists, um, people would like to get their hands on Baselight to develop looks. Um, we've got uh, DOPs, um, various creatives who currently use uh, a range of different tools to generate LUTs and, and other ways to actually get color into their pipeline. Um, and one of those tools obviously is Baselight, but again, you're back with the problem where Baselight is, is a fairly, um, it, it's a system that's not easy to, to get hold of sometimes. And uh, Baselight Student didn't provide the tools they needed because although you can develop the look in Baselight Student, there's no way of getting it out. Um, sure. So Baselight Look added the ability to export what we call a BLG file, um, which is actually the Baselight grade, hence the name BLG, all wrapped up into a single file that can then be imported into another system. How would they have done that before? You know, Baselight Student, would they, would they obviously you can't have that functionality in Student, so would they have needed to have a base like colorist friend who could have done it for them? Like how would they have achieved that before? Yeah, I mean, you would need access to a full Baselight system um, or Daylight, um, which is our dailies version of Baselight. But um, either of those systems, um, you know, they're expensive. They're, they're systems that um, you only tend to find in the, in the very high end post houses. So as you said, you'd, you'd probably need to know somebody uh, who would give you access to a baselight system. So that meant that we we were actually not really able to provide the people who really wanted to use baselight with the tools um, that they needed. Now, in reality, what tends to happen on most bigger projects is uh, the creatives, the, the DOP, um, maybe the director will spend some time with the colorist. If they intend to do the grading on baselight, then they will go into the suite and they will spend, then maybe they'll book out a day in the suite and they'll explore all the looks using the test shots they've got. But that obviously costs a bit of money. It means you've got a lot of planning. And if you don't have the test shots that you need at that time, then you don't necessarily get quite the looks you're looking for. Um, so th this way, it gives people literally, you know, a free portable tool that they can take anywhere. They can use anytime they like. Um, Baselight Look supports all the same camera formats that the full Baselight system does. So um, there's no restriction on what material you can put into it. So it allows you to generate to, to make those very sophisticated looks using all the grading tools um, and then, as I said, wrap them up and export them as a single file in the form of a BLG. It definitely sounds like a really flexible option that caters, again, maybe to the um, slightly lower budget production or, you know, maybe the, you know, a rushed production, like there's no time. Because I think obviously in the ideal scenario, right, you would have that that day of um, you know, booked in with a suite with a colorist to chat everything through, but that's a bit of a luxury sometimes, right? So this sounds like a really great solution to that. Yes, that's right. I mean, uh, I mean, I, with the BLG workflow, we're we're sort of talking about some fairly sophisticated color pipelines. 
um, the kind of projects that would uh, use BLGs on set would be maybe um, large episodic TV shows, uh, maybe Netflix type productions where they want to develop looks, um, uh, which often you can just get away with a LUT. And in fact, many shows just have a series of LUTs that they would use. They put them in the cameras, they would use them in monitors. So they can get a fairly, a reasonably accurate preview of what things are going to look like. But obviously LUTs um, themselves have various drawbacks. Um, and when you then come to do the grading further down line, um, you can't really use those LUTs. So the colorist has to spend a bit of time recreating the LUT itself before they can do the grading. So it's better if you can actually take the grade on set. Um, and with, um, with the BLG, we, we have um, an initiative that we started last year called BL, uh, BLG Tools. And this is an integration platform. Um, and again, it's free. Um, and that will allow people to, or other manufacturers, to integrate BLGs into their own products. Um, currently, Pomfort have integrated it into LiveGrade, which is their on-set system. Um, and that means that you've got the benefit of being able to create the looks, the, these BLG files, very sophisticated looks, um, which internally they contain all of the baseline grading information, import that into Pomfort LiveGrade um, as a BLG file. On set, um, the BLG is itself sort of internally locked, so you can't go in and start tweaking all the baseline grade right. layers. Yeah, but on set you don't do that anyway. You just sort of need to adjust the look. So typically, it's just a simple CDL grade that's added on top of the look. Um, but because it's based on this BLG file, when you then come to export these looks back out to go down the rest of your workflow, you've got that original BLG file that you can then unwrap, and it goes back into baseline. So the colorist has access to all that grading plus the tweaks that were done on set. Yeah, so you're not just having a um, having to recreate it from scratch. You've got a you've got a significantly graded stack already there for you. Yeah. Now, I, I would I, I would say at this point, Baselight Look is a free tool, and we don't want to undermine our professional users. So, if you generate BLGs on the full Baselight system or, or a Daylight system, they include not just the color information, but they also include all the other metadata, so time-based metadata. Uh, relevant to the actual timeline that you created them from. That means that um, you can seamlessly bring all of that back into a baseline timeline and match up all those looks with the corresponding grades we did in, in baseline originally. Now, in, in order to obviously protect our professional users, um, baseline look will only export the color part of the look. So in terms of look development and use on set, it does exactly the same. Um, it's just that when you then subsequently export those looks back down the pipeline, if they originated from Baselight Look, uh, when they come back into Baselight, you wouldn't be able to automatically populate your timeline with those looks. Um, it, it's it, sorry, it, it's the same reason that we we made the the database incompatible. So we can't um, you can't take a timeline from Baselight Look and bring it into a full Baselight system. Definitely. That that does make sense. I think the thing that um, I found slightly confusing about that, and I'd love for you to clarify, in the copy on the website, it said that they were static baselight look files, right? That they didn't contain that time-based metadata information. And I think the first thing that my brain went to, and I think a few other people's brains went to as well, is that does that mean that key framing information, so say a tractor, you know, a face through the shot, will that apply? Or will that get wiped? Is that time-based? information the keyframe channels are still supported and they're still they will still be exported in the look it's it's the metadata which basically ties that look to the timeline so um things like the the original clip name the original anything came that came from the original source material so tape id time code uh, that's that's all left out and that and that would be really important for things like multi paste and other exactly. tools like that okay Yes, we're, we're just trying to avoid the situation where somebody says, oh, great, I can now use free base light as a way of creating all my looks and then putting them into a full base light system so I don't yeah. have to pay for an assistant or, you know. If we kind of have this restriction, um, then we're still allowing it to be used for it, its intended purpose, which is the look development. And we're not giving people the opportunity to sort of bypass um, using a proper system for a proper workflow. So, um, Bob, is there any other features, um, like highlight features from base like look? Obviously, BLGs are a big one. Um, anything else that's yeah. sort of that you want to 
Well, there's, there's nothing specific in Baselight Look because it is it is exactly the same as the full Baselight software. Um, obviously, there are a few restrictions. Again, these these are around professional features. Yeah. Um, but the vast majority of, of Baselight, all, all the grading tools, compositing, basically everything that you do creatively in Baselight is, is exactly the same in Baselight Look. And the aim is that we will release Baselight Look um, in parallel with the equivalent full Baselight releases. So feature basically feature to feature um there won't be anything you you won't be able to learn or, or to be able to do on baselight look well one thing um we did change though i mentioned earlier on that baselight student um had a 90-day license restriction and you needed to contact us directly if you wanted to renew the license uh, with baselight look we've extended the license period to six months and it's now a self-renewing license. So when the license expires, you literally just connect the machine to the internet and then click on the activate button and it'll automatically reactivate the license. You don't have to contact us. You don't have to fill in any forms or anything. Can I just say, Bob, that is the best feature um, in my <laughs> in my personal opinion. I mean, again, um, for all of my tutorials on my channel, I've been using the Baselight Student um, tool. And every 90 days, um, I've gone through that process. So um, having that six-month recurring license, which is, as you say, automatic, yeah. very helpful, very cool. Um, big um, big shout out to that feature. Yeah, yeah. And and the reason that, I mean, some people have said, well, why don't you just, just make it a permanent license? Um, I mean, we, we by having a six-month break, it means that at any point, we can decide to move on from Baselight Look to something else. Um, if we had a permanent license, then there'd be people out there that were still using Baselight Look long after we decided to retire it and, and replace it with something else. And we, because this is um, obviously a, a free product and it's, um, it's you know, we're a small company, uh, we, we support um, a lot of high-end, very complex systems. We can only devote a, a relatively small amount of uh, time to supporting people working with Baselight Look. Um, so we don't want to have, be in a situation where we've got people with student, people with look and people with the latest system all trying to get support um, when half that software may now be completely obsolete. So we want to try and just make sure that people that are using it are only using the latest version of the tool, which is currently called Baselight Look. I think as well, probably people don't realize how small Filmlight is. Um, you know, I think when you're talking about DaVinci Resolve and Blackmagic, you know, Blackmagic is a huge company, right? Um, yeah. And I think that um, <laughs> people often equate, oh, why doesn't Baselight do this? Resolve does. Um, but as you say, right, there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of different factors. And you, you know, personally, the one thing which I love about Filmlight is that high level of support that you receive, especially if you're working at a post house that has Baselight. In my opinion, what sets you guys apart is that high level of support. And it makes sense that you wouldn't <laughs> want to, you know, have products out there which you which you can't support. Oh, you're right. I mean, it, literally, we, we're just a few dozen employees um, spread between London, LA, and a few other offices around the world. So we do have a reasonable global um, presence. But as you say, we're, we're a fairly small number of people trying to support some very sophisticated products with some quite demanding customers. Um, so, um, but having said that, uh, our training department, um, we've got about um, half a dozen people who regularly contribute to the training department. Um, and we're not all English speakers either. Um, we do cover other languages, um, especially Spanish and German. Um, we have an office in China and we're hoping to um, expand the training offerings in China as well. So we're, uh, we're not just um, English. And you may have noticed some of the more recent videos um, also have subtitles in other languages. So accessibility oh, is very important. But having said that, we, you know, we do obviously um, take uh, training very seriously. So based like look being our main, our key learning tool, um, we will uh, support people as much as we can. So if people are bas using based like look, um, they would contact us not through our professional customer support channels, um, but through the student support channels. Um, so you can send, if you go to our website, you'll find the links. Well, the first thing to do would be to actually go to our website because there are there are quite a few helpful FAQs. Um, okay. So before trying to contact us, I would I would say get get as far as you can with self help, and then yes, if you do need to get hold of us, um, student at filmlight.ltd.uk um, is the the main um, support email for Baselight Look, um, and then uh, other training inquiries, including Baselight Look. Uh, you can also send to training at filmlight.ltd.uk.
the main comparison point that I hear um, on my channel is between Resolve and um, Baselight. And Resolve obviously has a free version and then a paid studio version. Would there ever be a free unrestricted or paid unrestricted base light um, that is sort of competing with Resolve around that price point? Honestly, I can't answer that, but I would say it's unlikely um, yep. because Filmlight and Blackmagic um, sit in completely different parts of the industry. Our products are different. Um, we focus entirely on color. Our only product um, is base light. Um, we have different versions of base light, uh, as I've already mentioned, Daylight, which although it has a different name, it is essentially base light aimed at the dailies uh, workflow. Um, and it's not just the software that we sell, we sell the, the entire turnkey system. So it's a large uh, Linux based system running our own version of um, a Linux operating system. Um, obviously the software is the main part of it, but the control panels, we design and build control panels as well. So they're all handmade control panels. Um, so it means we're, we're, we're very much dealing with um, a, a very, very specialist product um, with specialist support. Um, and as I've already mentioned, we're a relatively small company. So this is our focus. Um, for us to then try and broaden into free or low cost software, uh, which would then be used by thousands, tens of thousands of customers, it would be impossible to support them. And, for us, um, supporting the industry is is as important as developing good products. So as I said, Filmlight and Blackmagic are totally different companies. So even though people like to compare Baselight with Resolve, um, the reality is that we're coming from totally different places. No, that's awesome. Really, really interesting to hear. Baselight look is an exciting step in the training space. Is there anything uh, new and exciting that you can tease uh, around You know, where the Baselight <laughs> product is going in the future? Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're constantly developing Baselight. Um, the software, even though the number itself doesn't go up very fast, currently we're on version five, um, we've actually been developing the software over more than 15 years. In fact, for, for longer um, than Resolve, even though uh, they're, they're also quite a, an established uh, product. But um, that means that we, we're constantly adding new features we we work very closely with the industry as i said all, all we do is color so the people we work with are involved with color colorists uh dops anybody in the industry who has anything to do with color uh, we work with them so that means that uh, we get feedback on what they need um but also in consultation with them we help them move forward so it's it's um a kind of shared responsibility if you like to to make sure that the technology as it becomes available, um, is used in, in appropriate ways. Um, so we're, we're currently working on version six software. Now I can't tell you when that's going to be out, um, but that will have, um, it'll look a little bit different. Um, the user interface, which a lot of people now criticize as being looking a little bit out of date. Um, so it'll have a fresh new look. Um, but it won't be so different that it can scare people off. You know, they'll be, they'll be able to recognize it instantly as baselight. So our current users, um, they will only see improvements. Um, we've got um, uh, massive improvements in the timeline. I'm not going to give too much away there. Um, we've got um, a couple of brand new grading tools, which also um, I'm going to have to keep quiet about right now. But um, I'm fairly confident that once people start using these grading tools um, in combination with the base grade and the, the tools that we've developed in recent years, um, you won't really want to use any other grading tools. It, literally, you'll be able to do everything you need to in baseline version six. Um, obviously, we'll have to wait and see how people react to it when it comes out, but um, hopefully later this year, we'll, we'll start getting the first previews of it. So you'll start seeing it on the internet in various um, videos um, and eventually as I said Baselight Look um, intends to be the is, we've intended it to be the learning tool for the main Baselight system so once version 6 is released um, we will follow that with a version 6 Baselight Look um, as soon as we can now some of the technology we're employing in version 6 won't actually uh, it won't be possible initially to bring that um, into uh, a laptop version for example, we're looking at integrating our products with quite a lot of uh, machine learning tools. Um, I won't call it AI because that's not what it is. It's machine learning, but um, some of our new tools 
make use of uh, some of these models that have been out there um, using neural networks. So that's all quite exciting as well. Well, Bob, I'm sure that you've um, made everyone who's watching very curious to know what these features are <laughs> going to be. So obviously, I'll be doing a lot of tutorials on my channel when Baselight version 6 comes out, which will be really exciting. But um, as well, uh, if people are you know super keen to hear as, as soon as something happens, how would they find that out? We, we've already started building up uh, a library of training videos, which are actually done using Baselight Look. And if you go to the training section of our website, you'll be able to find those videos. Um, and in fact, those videos um, are recorded during our weekly uh, live training sessions, um, which uh, I haven't mentioned this yet, but if you go to the training section of our website, uh, you can sign up for the, the free uh, weekly online sessions. Now, that they're, they're, they take place in the European time zone. So for anybody outside of Europe, um, it might not be the best time of day for you to watch them. But we do, as I said, we do record them all. Um, and they're made available a few days afterwards on our website. Um, so as, as we go through the development of the new tools, some of those will be covered by those videos. We, we plan to just continue to add to that. And that's a perfectly free resource. You don't have to subscribe to any of that. Um, you don't have to pay to see the videos. Is there any um, interactivity in those live streams? Can I comment and ask questions or is it a sort of a set presentation? Format. No, absolutely. Um, because we're recording them, um, the main part of the session, um, we will monitor the chat and we'll answer to any questions during the chat. But at the end of the, the live portion of the session, um, we'll then go back and, and any uh, questions uh, which require some sort of illustration will go into the software and we'll, we'll show, um, it will actually illustrate the answer. Um, and we know, of course, people want to follow along at home. So we encourage people to download and install Baselight Look um, before, uh, or at least uh, while, while watching these sessions. So I wouldn't expect you to keep up with them during the session, but after it's finished, uh, when the recording's available, certainly go back, go through the recording, try it all out for yourself. Um, and then if you do have questions, as I said, you can send them to us by email. And just confirming as well, those videos are on your website, but also on your Filmlight YouTube channel? That's right. Yes, you, you'll find if you if you go into YouTube and just search for uh, Baselight Training, um, you should find those uh, pretty quickly. But if you go directly to our channel, um, there's actually a playlist in there um, and we're going to add more playlists so we can group together um, training videos into into sort of uh, sections. So you could follow through a section to cover a specific uh, subject area. Awesome. Hey, um, Bob, thank you so much for your time. I know it's um, it's in the morning here for me in New Zealand, but it's in the evening there for you in London. So I will let you go. Thank you so much. It's always great to hear a little bit more about Baselight Look and especially sort of the back end of what Filmlight is doing behind the scenes. 